Hello and welcome to the Young Orthopod and today we will learn about the Trendlinburg test. The Trendlinburg test is a screening test to check the integrity of the abductor mechanism of the hip joint. First, let's learn about the abductor mechanism of the hip joint. Hip joint acts as a first order liver. It has four components. The head of the femur and the acetabular socket acts as the fulcrum. The neck and the trochanteric region acts as the liver, which is the site of the effort. The hip abductor muscles, primarily the gluteus medius, acts as the power, and the lower limb, distal to the trochanteric region, acts as the load. Function of the abductor mechanism is to keep the pelvis leveled during the single stance. Normally, each leg bears half of the body weight. During single stance, when one leg is lifted off the ground, the other leg takes the entire weight. The gravitational pull acting on the trunk and the non-weight bearing right lower limb creates an adduction torque around the supporting hip joint. That is, the gravity will attempt to drop the pelvis around the weight-bearing right hip joint axis. The abduction counter-torque is supplied by the hip abductor musculature on the weight-bearing side, resulting in raising the side of the pelvis which is not taking the weight. So that's how the hip joint stability in the unilateral stance is totally attributed to the hip joint abductor mechanism. Now, as I said earlier, the Trendelenburg test is performed to check the integrity of the abductor mechanism. Let's see how a Trendelenburg test is performed in the clinic. The observer should stand behind the patient. The patient is then asked to stand on the unaffected side first, lifting affected side foot and flexing the hip by 30 degrees. Normally, one is able to lift the other side without losing the balance and hold the position for 30 seconds. This lift is judged by observing the gluteal folds for at least 30 seconds. Then repeat the same on the affected side. Observe the gluteal folds for at least 30 seconds. If the patient is able to lift the pelvis while standing on the affected side, Ask the patient to lift it maximally and correct any tendency to lean over the weight-bearing side by bringing the shoulders at the same level. A positive Trendlinburg test means the patient is either unable to lift the pelvis of the opposite side or there is an initial lift but the patient is unable to hold it for at least 30 seconds or if the patient is unable to lift the pelvis maximally. Let's see what are the causes of a positive Trellenberg test. A positive test may be observed in the condition resulting in the paralysis of the gluteus medius muscle, for example, polio, radiculopathy, girdle muscular dystrophy, and cerebral palsy. Failure of the liver system may also result in a positive Trellenberg test. The examples include the trochanteric avulsion, fracture neck of femur, and coxa vera. Disruption of the fulcrum as seen in the dislocation of the hip joint, developmental dysplasia of the hip and Perthes disease may also result in a positive Trellenberg test.
gluteal inhibition caused by painful hip due to arthritis or infection, a difficulty in maintaining balance, an uncooperative patient and sacroiliitis may lead to a false positive test. A false negative Trellenberg test may result from the use of suprapubic muscles and psoas and rectus femoris muscles to maintain the balance. A painless hip joint, a normal quadratus lumborum muscle and the absence of abduction deformity of the hip are few of the prerequisites for doing this test. So this was a brief idea of the Trendelenburg test. If you like this video, please tell us in the comments below and give us a thumbs up. For more interesting stuff in orthopedics, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe. We'll be back with another video. See you soon.